The vice regal, this vice regal poet, Juan del Valle Cabello, is, is sometimes known as the Quevedo of the colonies due to his great affinity to the Spanish early 17th century Baroque satirists. Very famous person, Quevedo. But Quevedo had written some 45 years earlier. Valle, as Quevedo, makes use of a long tradition of well-known satirical conventions of Western culture. These are not this is imitation of long, long-standing topoi or, or conventions that they just repeat. But when they repeat them, they repeat them adding something of their own. What is called, uh, what Leo Spitzer calls uh, when, when through the process of imitatio or imitation, because uh, 17th century poets, unlike romantic poets, romantic poets write from the heart. 17th poets, 17th century poets imitate Petrarch. But of course, they contribute something of their own, which Leo Spitzer called, not Leo Spitzer, but uh, Ernst Curtius calls outdoing. There's also a sense, there's always a desire to outdo the poet you're imitating. And I think the same thing happens with Valle Cavieres. Uh, Valle, uh, uh, his poems, Valle's poems, for example, denounce hypocrisy and braggery in courtly life and also offer his readers a comical and grotesque parade of conventional types such as, among other lecherous old codgers, lascivious women, adulterers, cuckolds, seducers, false virgins, prostitutes, lawyers, notaries, scribes, and university professors. <laughs> In all cases, tied to a satire of the medical profession, his favorite and obsessive target. As we shall see, however, one interesting aspect of his works, and worthy of study, is that such traditional and cliched themes and characters, although imitating with outstanding wit, are recontextualized. This is important. They're the same topics, but they're recontextualized in discursive practices that contain a historical supplement that furthers our understanding of the social and cultural complexities of 17th century Peru. Critical readings of the poetry of Valle Cavides have had three main orientations. There are studies of a philological nature that judge the aesthetic value of his works by comparing them with his peninsular counterparts, his Spanish counterparts, Spaniards often relegating him to an inferior status, Peruvian, on the other hand, many times exalting his superiority, other critics, given the rich referential value of satire, have preferred to focus on his works as sources for documenting historical events and social practices, bypassing the literary and creative aspects of his poetry. Finally, some of the more recent approaches to Valle Cavieres of a cultural nature have paid attention to how his works address the ideological contradictions of his 17th century Peruvian colonial society. As I already suggested, my study belongs to this latter approach. Valle's satirical texts, with the exception of very few poems that were published in the Proceedings of Courtly Contests, have come to us in manuscript form, so far in ten manuscripts of varying lengths and at times of dubious attributions. One interesting fact is that all his manuscripts seem to show the poet attempting to give his multiple and fragmented works, although parodically, a certain order or organization associated with the supposedly permanence of the published book. Because these are manuscripts. All extant manuscript collections begin with a parody of the well-known preliminaries that introduce the publication of a, of a tome or a book. It is my belief that such mock preliminaries entail a critical perspective on the letter or archival document which played a very important part in Spain's attempt at maintaining its colonies in order. But that's material for a different talk. In those introductory pages of the manuscript, we find the typical preliminaries of a book, among them dedications, official approvals, licenses to publish, expert opinions, and a prologue. In the dedication to an allegorical death, we read that the satirical persona, or the satirical narrator, if you want to call him that, who claims to have barely escaped from the deadly deeds of doctors, wishes to be a puntual coronista, or an exact and factual chronicler, 
of their wrongdoings. And that for this purpose he has written a cuerpo de libro or a body of a book. The commonplace identification between body and book is repeated in the parecer or the opinion of the preliminaries supposedly written by the anatomy. The anatomy was a skeleton of the hospital of San Andres in Lima. A skeleton who finds a book worthy of publication since, like him, he says, can serve as an example for mortals. This statement coming from a skeleton recalls a favored counter-reformist image for Banitas, the skull that served as a reminder of the brevity of life. One of the great, great, great uh, preoccupations of the Baroque thinker. Simultaneously, however, the word parecer, besides meaning opinion, also means likeness. In other words, the skeleton or anatomy is also a metaphor for the book. It is like the book. And the word anatomy, besides skeleton, was also a general term for close analysis. And by the 17th century, it was already being used to refer to, quote, the dissection or artificial separation of the various parts of the body so that the functions of each be known and illnesses be cured effectively. This is very early. Furthermore, on these preliminaries, there is also an identification between medical practice and satire as cure of social ills. In his mock prologue, the satirical persona states, and I paraphrase the verses, my treatise is a better doctor, because if you look at it closely, it, co it causes merriment, which is an excellent cure. End of quote. The interconnection between satirist as chronicler and doctor of social ills seems to be directly tied to his perception of satire as anatomical speculum, as a mirror. Lima's social body is represented, cut up, and scrutinized throughout the work's heterogeneous reference. Finally, one more note of interest, given the ser serial comical gist of Valle's satire, it is noteworthy that during the author's times, this is a footnote, according to Giovanni Ferrari, so-called anatomical theaters for academic learning often turned into public spectacles not exempt from Carnegie-esque laughter in erotic voyeurism interest, a practice that is quite pertinent for understanding of Vallecavi. This is satirical anatomy of Lima, presented quite baroquely so, as a theater of grotesque bodies and human foibles. The anatomical knife or pen of the satirist examines closes a myriad of social practices that informed life in 17th century Lima. Unlike the official chroniclers of the time, by the crown, which idealized viceregal vice life and society for the pleasure of colonial ideology, Valles' knowledge of Lima is that of the anatomist who delves deeply into the social body, bringing forth its uncensored and raw practices. Well, so much for uh, another mini-introduction about Valles.